Hey, Raymond here, and I have an announcement. Project Feline Merch, it is out. Check it out, links down below. We've got black t-shirts, white t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts. We've got mugs as well, because I, I drink a lot of coffee, and I sure love having a real Project Feline mug instead of a boring plain mug. We have stickers as well that you can put wherever you want. I might put this on my laptop, but hurry, because we're only doing this for two weeks, and then after two weeks, you will no longer be able to buy the merch. All sales of the shirts help me greatly to keep developing my game and to keep doing what I'm doing on YouTube. The best way you can support me and the game is to check out the merch. I put a lot of time into it. Check out our merch link in description. Let's get on with the video. Welcome to another Project Feline devlog documenting the development of my dream game. Over the past month, I've worked on a whole new update. I've developed new AI controlled enemies. I've updated the game start sequence, improved the checkpoint system and created a brand new map. In this devlog, we'll be taking a close look into my development process day by day from start to finish. We've got a lot of action ahead, so let's get into it. Hey guys, so it's Monday afternoon and we're about to start the next development sprint for Project Feline. Now, what I'd like to focus on for the next two weeks is a list of tasks right here. Now, throughout the past few devlogs I've released, I've been getting a lot of great feedback and comments from you guys, and thank you so much, by the way. But a lot of those comments have been mainly focused on like the lack of special effects and polish. However, there is one more thing that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, and that's been the addition of more obstacles and enemies. So I'm going to be focusing this sprint on how we might go about putting that into the game and what kind of experience we can get from things like turrets and obstacles. On my list here, I've tried to break this down as best I can. And this is what I do before every sprint. I try to just think of things that need to be done. We're gonna be focusing on creating a turret because I think that's a pretty simple kind of enemy that would be a good place to start from and we can build from there later. And I wanna try and break this up into different components. So the first thing we have is a line of sight component. And what I'd like this to do, I want to program a behavior that can seek a target and look at it and sort of detect whether a target is in range, which I then am going to use for this next card here for the turret, which will then utilize this line of sight component and a shooting component, which I've already developed. We're gonna make a new level for that too. I've got a little card for that as well, the laboratory level. And hopefully in the next two weeks, we can get all that done. So I'm gonna get to work on this. Catch up with you guys soon. All right guys, so it's Monday evening and I've done a bit of work on this turret enemy here. This is the blueprint for it, very basic visuals. Rather than talking about it, I just wanna show you how it works first. If I launch in my level here, you can see over here, we've got the uh, the turret starting to shoot at us. And he's shooting these sort of plastic projectiles in our direction. The turret won't one-to-one -one follow Gabby. It'll have a bit of a a smoothed interpolation there, just so that it's easier to dodge and all that. But one other cool thing as well is that if I if I hide behind this corner, see that the turret actually stops shooting. At the moment, you don't take any damage from the turret and you can't damage the turret either. It's just the shooting and aiming at the moment. This actually took a lot quicker than I thought it would to set up. I was planning to spend like a, several hours to figure out how to do line of sight and aiming and all that and character detection. But luckily Unreal actually has those features built into the engine. Of course, I think I'm going to have to do a few things to make this a bit more fun, but I want to also experiment with maybe hit scan types of weapons instead of projectiles just to see what works better and what feels more fun. But I think I might just spend a bit of time just tweaking and, and fiddling around with things and I'll catch up with you guys soon. All right, so it's it's been a couple days. I've been working a bit more on this turret, getting like a hit scan fire system going and it's proving a bit troublesome. I might just like put it down, but Here's what I've managed to get working at the moment. So if I hit play here, um, if I pick around this corner, we've got our turret, and you can see that he shoots this hit scan projectile at us, um, indicated by this red debug shape. You'll notice that the turret's firing in these bursts, like these short two bullet bursts. And what I've been able to do over the past few days is customize how the firing behavior works. So if I go into the turret settings here, for example, and change like its fire rate to something a lot lower, see that the shooting is a lot slower. You can see it fires in these two bullet bursts and I can actually change that too. I've got this other number here which sort of puts the delay in between the bursts. If I up that to 10, 
and maybe give it three bullets and up the if I change these both to 10 maybe just so that we get an idea I pick around here you can see it does these really rapid three burst shots so I don't know yeah it's just like an idea I thought I might experiment with it honestly doesn't feel that much different than having a projectile system. So yeah, I might just leave it on projectile for now, and I'd like to work on some other enemy types. I'm gonna get some shut eye, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so I've done a bit of working, and I've been learning some new things, and I managed to get some uh, drone sort of things going on that chase you around the map. So let's hit play, and I'll show you guys how that how that works. So you can see when I boot in here. There's like four of these little guys like chasing me around and I want to have it so that like when you get when they get close to you they like shock you with something and and deplete your health but I haven't put that in yet but for the moment I just got the chasing behavior working and it seems to do pretty good but I've been learning a new system because uh, for the turret I was using an older depreciated system this pawn sensing component which worked really great but apparently there's like a newer version of it that's a lot more advanced that I thought I might as well use and take advantage of. So I've instead for this new enemy been using the AI perception component instead of the pawn sensing component. And this has a lot more built into it. And I've made up a little behavior tree on how these enemies behave. But yeah, I have to say out of the box, Unreal gives you a lot to work with. I thought I'd have to spend hours coding up like an AI perception thing. I'm really happy and glad that developers get access to these sorts of tools and for free as well. And so far, like this to me is like good enough to test around and play with. Again, I still got to add things to it like damage and all. Even just dodging these guys is, is pretty fun. I, I really like to see a huge swarm of these chasing after Gabby. I think that'd be fun. So, so I'm gonna take a little break now, but I want to keep working on these little drone thingies. I'll catch up with you guys soon. So I've done a bit more dev on these patrolling drones. If I spawn in here, you can see that they all chase me. But I had a thing where the minute they lost sight of Gabby, they would just sort of sit there and do nothing. So what I'd like to have happen is for them to sort of go back through like a patrolling route. Um, so I've set up an example one for one of these little guys. So if I if I get further enough away, you can see one of them goes goes off to his little corner there, and he sort of starts doing this basic patrol route. Now for some reason he he doesn't loop through it properly. I'm still working out some bugs with that. But yeah, so that's the progress I managed to make. Um, this has been a bit tricky to learn just because it's like an entirely new system and I've never touched it before. So I'm just going to keep working at this over the next day or so. Let's see how we do. I'll catch you guys soon. All right, boys, we've got the AI patrol system functioning and I'm going to show you guys how it works. So I've got a few drones set up here. These two have already been set up, ready to go, and they each patrol their own area and they do it in different ways. And to demonstrate this, we're going to set up this little guy with his own patrol path and his own behavior towards following that path. So in my blueprints folder here, I've made a patrol path actor, which basically is a set of vectors that this character can follow. So if I place the base here, I can move this over. I'm going to put this over here for the moment. And then if we go up to the path data variable, we can add an element to it and you can see it gives us this purple uh, hexagonal shape in our viewport. And this is a vector location. So I might leave that at the origin and I might make another one and I'll move this one out. And if I have it like this, we can basically get our drone to move between point A and B. Now, just to be a bit crazy, I'm gonna set up like five of these points here. Now, the order in which these are placed is very important. You can see that each of these has a name and that has an index. AI will follow this path in the order of those numbers. What I can do then once I have the path is click on my drone. And if I scroll down, you can see that there's a patrol path variable. If I click on that, I can assign it to that one we just created. So now this is going to follow that path, but wait, there's more. If I click on the path, I can then tell the AI how this path should be followed. And there's a few options I've set up for that. So below our path data, I have a loop type, which will say, hey, when we reach the end of the path, what are we going to do? The default option is clamp. It'll just reach the end and stop moving. The next option is loop, which after going through all those points will return back to point zero. And the final option is zigzag, which says to the character when it reaches the end, it then goes backwards along the path the way it came. And as you can see, we have our drone over there and he's just sort of, you know, zigzagging around the place. And then if I try and get closer, he'll start chasing me. And if I run into these other guys, they'll all get into a huge horde and start trying to chase me around the map. So now that they're on my tail, if I gain enough speed, I should be able to shake them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some wall riding over here. 
and hopefully I can lose them. Uh, as you can see, if I get further enough away, uh, they'll go back to their patrol routes, just as usual. So yeah, there we have it. There's the basic drone patrolling behavior. Here's the uh, behavior tree I've used to program this behavior, and this is basically the brain of these AI. It needs to check for only one thing, and that's can we see the player? And that's handled by Unreal's AI perception system. It'll use that and say, okay, is the player in sight? Can we detect the player? If it can, it'll run this chase state. And then when it can't see the player anymore, it'll then activate this tree of behavior. And this is what controls that patrolling state. And there we have it, it's uh, pretty simple. And again, I've never, ever, ever touched AI in my life. Ultimately, thanks to the Unreal Blueprint system and AI system and all that, it made it much, much easier. So yeah, that's what we managed to do within the first week of our sprint. I'm going to take the weekend off a bit just so that my brain could process all this new knowledge. Next week of the sprint, I'm going to be focusing on maps and seeing if we can get some damage states going on. So I'm going to check back with you guys after the weekend on Monday. So I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys. So after more headbanging and tinkering, I think I now have the enemy AI attack state working. Now, don't be alarmed here, I've had to do a little something, but if I drop into the level here, you can see that we've got some patrolling enemies. And if I get in range, they'll both run at me and start kicking me. <laughs> and that's just sort of to test the attack state. I didn't have any other animation to use, so I've just had to use these test models for the moment. It seems to work, and that's that's what matters. But if I get further enough away, of course, these the, they'll turn around and start walking back. Uh, that's another feature too I've added, is that they actually have different speeds now for when they're patrolling and chasing. So you can see now that they're walking back to their routes at a very sort of paced speed, but the minute they detect me, they just start charging at me uh, and start kicking me in. And for the technical side, I've done a bit more here with the behavior tree, uh, mainly in terms of whether or not we're in melee attack range. And that uh, was a bit problematic, took me a while to set up. It was one of those cases where I had one of these tasks here called check target distance, which compares uh, the AI's distance compared to the target's distance, being the player, but I used the wrong event receive. I used received activation instead of activation AI, and that was about three hours of trying to figure out why this wasn't working just because of a silly mistake. So yeah, that's probably gonna be it for me today. I'll check in with you guys and see what progress we make. Okay, so to kick off the day, I made some final changes to the AI, and that is adding a way to attack them and to get hit and to do damage. And I'll show you how that works. So for the moment, I've had to switch back to the old character model because I didn't have any combat animations for the new one. But if I run around here, I can uh, see that these enemies will come and attack me and they can do damage and I'll actually play a death animation and fall to the ground and and die like so and likewise i can attack these enemies as well if i time my kick attack at just the right time i can take them out and if i can get them head on there we go so so i can just take them out like this if i hit melee just before they hit me and then of course we've got our turret there and i can actually do damage to this as well if i can manage to get close and there we go now another cool thing too i've added is that the slide attack will now do damage so you can see I do there, if I just slide into them, boom, there we have it. So we can either kick them or we can slide them. I'm still not sure yet as to whether I'm gonna keep this kick move in. I feel like there could be more done to it, but just due to time constraints, I'm just gonna leave it in for this build and see how people use it. But that's probably gonna be all I do this sprint for the enemy AI. But yeah, I'm gonna have some lunch now and I'll check in with you guys when I have some progress on the maps. So it has been a few days since my last recording. A lot's been going on. Had a few delays. I've had to extend the sprint by another week due to certain circumstances. So this is the third and final week of this sprint. And we have a brand new map here that we actually built during a live stream that I hosted last week and another one yesterday. So thank you to everyone who could join the live stream. I really appreciated all the support, just having that company there. During the stream, we had nothing and created this entire map from scratch. There's also some new features I've added in just today that I want to show you guys as well. So let's hop into the level. So we can see this big pink line going through the ground. And this is now the starting line. So what I've done is I've removed that countdown sequence that would happen at the beginning. And a lot of people who speed ran the game had a situation where let's say they tried doing a run but then they messed it up and they wanted to restart it so they could try again. 
but having to restart, they had to wait through that arbitrary three second countdown again, and it just completely broke the flow in my opinion. So I've changed that completely now, so we can move around freely when we load in the level instantly, and the stopwatch won't commence until we cross the starting line, like so. So here's the level that I built on stream, and as you can see down here, we have those patrolling drone enemies. So I have to be careful around these guys, because if I don't do anything, they will they will kill me and send me back to the start. So to take care of these guys, I can jump down and slide into them like that. And as you can see, I've changed the checkpoints too to have that sort of starting line and finish line look, kind of like a racetrack. So let's continue down. So as you can see, I've got a little grind area, some, some platforming, another checkpoint, and then we have this little grind rail section here. Now I have to use both wall running and grinding in combination to get through here. And if I don't, I'll end up plummeting to the ground and I'll be sent back to the last checkpoint. We then get to our next little segment, which is kind of tricky to get through. So I'll try my best. So we'll jump over to this little area. And as you can see, there's a turret waiting for me right there. So I have to be really quick. So I can choose to dodge them. That's one approach. However, uh, and that'll get me across just fine. However, if I want extra points in my score counter, I can try and take these guys out by sliding into them. And you have to be really quick. And as you can see, I've got a thousand points. So these turrets give you a lot of points. So there we have that level. And of course there are some shortcuts, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. You can try it out yourself. Link in the description. We got a new build of the game with this new map and the enemies all there. Also, if you want to have a world record on this prototype, you can join our Discord linked in the description. We have a little speedrun text channel in there where you guys can discuss speedrunning and we have a link to our leaderboard as well. So if you want to compete, submit your best time using the leaderboard form and see how you rank compared to everyone else. And I hope you have fun with it. So this concludes our three week development sprint. We managed to figure out how the AI system works, make the turrets and those drones, create an entirely new map and rework the checkpoint system. Also add a bit of the combat back in as well. So we've made quite a few changes and I I hope that the wait was well worth it. So download the new build, linked in the description, and let me know your thoughts. Have fun. Thank you so much for watching. Support Project Feline and check out the merch linked in the description. But act fast as the merch is only available for a limited time. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications so you don't miss the next devlog. These devlogs are funded by all of my supporters on Patreon, and I'd like to give a special thank you to my top tier supporters. If you'd like to support the production of these videos, you can make your pledge via my Patreon linked in the description and get exclusive access to behind the scenes posts and exclusive chats on my Discord server. I'd like to thank the artist behind this episode's wonderful Project Feline fan art submissions. If you'd like to have your fan art featured in these videos, submit them to our Discord server linked in the description. And be sure to follow my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more frequent updates on the game in between devlogs. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.